Have you ever wondered what it's like to write for K-pop? I sat down with Jessica Pierpoint to find out what it was like to write one of the biggest songs for one of the biggest K-pop girl groups right now. Hi everyone, I am Jessica Pierpoint. I am a singer-songwriter from Liverpool, UK. Currently in Liverpool, but usually based in South Korea. Um, and I make songs for K-pop artists. <laughs> Amazing. So I want to know a little bit about your history as a songwriter. So how did you get into it in the first place? Oh, well, it, it kind of goes like way back. I've been writing songs since I was about 16. Um, I was at college and I was writing songs Um, and I went on to do a songwriting degree at Lippa, which is um a university owned by Paul McCartney here in Liverpool. Yeah, I was very much primarily into doing like the own like artistry thing. So like I had my own like, artist persona and pretty much was just trying to go down that route that everybody likes you know likes to go down I was making primarily like pop music and like EDM a little bit of house um but then I discovered K-pop <laughs> the end of 2017 uh, because obviously my uni it was very um much international so we had a lot of international like students and there was a lot of Korean students there and I actually made friends with some of them they just introduced me to this whole new world and I was like oh wow I can never go back now so then it was kind of like I was trying to incorporate like the sounds of k-pop into my own artistry and you know every time I would rock up to like a session I'd be like okay this is the vibe I'm feeling today and it'd just be like a playlist full of k-pop songs and then in the end I was just like you know what I really want to like write for these artists but it's kind of like as an English writer how how do you even have the chance to do that do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. um so yeah that just all sort of started from there but I've been writing songs for like maybe eight years or something like that I don't even know I'm terrible with math so I don't know (laughs) the exact amount of time so what artists can you remember listening to when you were starting to get into k-pop who was on your playlist I mean I've kind of always been a fan of shiny um I've always loved (laughs) Taemin so much like Taemin's like my favorite like SM like solo artist um but obviously they introduced me to like BTS and Blackpink like they were the first ones that like I primarily would like listen to all of, you know the time um so it was pretty much just them to begin with and then I would say October 2019 I started my own K-pop radio show at a community college here in Liverpool and um I just you know I was kind of forced in a sense to listen to like all these other artists and from then it was kind of like oh my god there's so many other like amazing groups so it was just kind of like a spiral from there basically I just got into so many different like types of sounds and like the concepts like the cutesy stuff and you know a bit more of like the hard hitting so yeah I would just say uh, primarily it was shiny Blackpink and BTS. (laughs) Are there any particular songs that stood out for you at that time? Um, I think for Shiny, it was a uh, view and um, like anything from that like album, the Story of Light album as well as like one of my favorites. Uh, the first ever BTS song that I heard was I Need You. Um, and that was like always my favorite. And that was actually like before I even saw like any kind of music video. I had like two songs on my iTunes and it was I Need You and Save Me <laughs> from from that album. So yeah, I would say those were the ones that like really like stood out to me you've got amazing taste (laughs) (laughs) thank you (laughs) so I know our readers will really want to know about your time working with Purple Kiss and Itzy so would you like to give us an insight about what it was like songwriting for them yeah of course um so with Itzy obviously it was a little bit more just like behind the scenes I never really got to have a um interaction with them in like the studio like I had with Purple Kiss the Itzy song was actually written prior to me leaving for Korea it was actually like one of the last songs that I worked on before I left um so you know like I was not expecting it to even like go anywhere like even that fast I worked on that with my amazing co-writers uh Sebastian and Deirdre Thoth bros the best bros ever (laughs) um and it was amazing for me because like they've worked on so many of my 
favorite songs um so you know it was such an honor to even have that opportunity in a sense I'd only had releases out in China prior to that so I still kind of felt you know like a newbie yeah. relatively um you know it was just like one of those things but um that was just an amazing experience because I never imagined that my first <laughs> k-pop release was going to be with my favorite girl group do you know what I mean like it's not something that happens every day you know like I have so many like writer friends in the industry who have worked in it for so long and like even they have never like achieved like an itty title you know what I mean like it's something that everybody like aspires for so it's like a huge thing so you know obviously when I was in Korea I got to visit like JYP and things and that was amazing but um I haven't yet met the girls that is still on the bucket list but maybe one day <laughs> maybe one day soon but with Purple Kiss I got to actually like interact with them in like the studio um and I got to help vocal direct that one kind of happened really fast like we um already had like the original version of the song because I think everybody had noticed very early on that Can't Stop Dreaming was the debut song for one of the members already so it was like oh my god we're gonna get a full version of the song and it was kind of like oh everyone's expecting this to be great so I <laughs> hope they love it but um yeah I actually got to work on that song in um RBW so that was great um to actually like, work in a label um and it was pretty much like cut the same <laughs> day and then it was recorded like the next week so yeah I got to meet all of the girls we had two separate recording days I think because I think Swan was unavailable on like the regular day so yeah it was nice to experience that like twice Got amazing vocalists and such lovely girls as well it was like such a huge thing for me as like a k-pop fan to actually get to see how everything works like behind the scenes um so yeah it was just like a dream a dream come true basically <laughs> I can imagine it it all sounds amazing to be honest I'm quite jealous <laughs> <laughs> so what moment in particular would you say stood out for you doing that I think it was kind of realizing wow like I know how far I've came now you know it was kind of like I'd spent two years like literally like over lockdown um, I was doing my final year of uni just like online as well and it was like I signed my publishing deal end of 2020 so you know I was still very much in like the midst of like lockdown and COVID and things and um, you know I've just been writing songs from this bedroom for so long recording them from this bedroom for so long and it was like I'm finally here like I had so many plans to travel to Korea for such a long time and it was like every step back it's like if it wasn't like a pandemic it was like actual restrictions like I can't enter the country you know it was just like a lot of like different things constantly but I think timing is everything and I think it was 100% the right time for me to be there and I think obviously when you're in that like environment you really do realize like just how far you've come so I think that for me was like the biggest thing. It was like, wow, I'm actually here and I'm finally doing this. You know, it's not just something that I have like imagined inside of my head, like it's actually happening now. So yeah, I would say that. That's amazing. <laughs> what in particular about Korea do you really like? I'm assuming you were in Seoul at the time. Yeah. So what do you love about it? I've had a lot of friends from Korea for a long time anyway like prior to me like visiting so you know I knew how lovely like the people were the culture um everybody loves the food come on if you don't like the food you're lying but <laughs> I would just say the main thing for me was just how kind everybody was see that's not me like trying to have this big like oh like Korea is this perfect like place in the world because you know like it's wrong to say that anywhere is like the perfect place in the world but you know from my own experience like I can only talk from my experience I have never felt so welcomed in an environment um everyone's just like so kind so generous they really do like care like about you and like how you are and things like that and you know everybody's like always willing to work really hard as well like they're well I would say like their work ethic in general not only in the music industry is like so like 
motivating like they're in the studio till like five in the morning and then they sleep until like <laughs> 7 p.m the next day and then they're in the studio all night again and that sort of like ethic is what is like I'm aiming for in the future so yeah I just think I would just say like the culture as a whole is something that was like really um it just like really resonated with me yeah <laughs> You briefly mentioned the food as well. So I'm going to ask, what's your favourite Korean dish? Oh, it's either kalguksu or chanchibuksu. It's like the same sort of thing, I know. But like, one's noodles, <laughs> one's more like a broth. But I would say that. Um, everybody loves kimbap, so I have to say that. But I am um, i don't like seafood. I'm actually really picky. And obviously, it's hard over there because they have so much seafood. But um, there's just like so many like other options. But yeah, my number one uh, go-to is uh, <laughs> Janchikuksu, definitely. Good choice. <laughs> I noticed as well from your Instagram, like some of your captions are written in Korean. So I was quite curious about your Korean language journey. <laughs> yeah. So are you currently learning? When did you start? Yeah, so I've been kind of like on and off learning for like quite a while. Um obviously meeting my friends at uni was the main thing because I was like oh like their language is so cute like I really want to like know how to like communicate with them you know I'm always so inspired by someone who like learns multiple languages anyway and it was always something that I really wanted to do when I was young obviously when you're in like high school you're kind of like forced to learn another language right unfortunately mine was French we didn't have anything cool like you know Korean or like anything else um so I always actually found it easier to just like learn from like YouTube and things like that um I have spent a lot of money on like textbooks but I just I I think I'm more of like a audio and like visual learner um obviously I have my Korean friends to help me as well my ex is also Korean so that was also helpful because I kind of had to learn to speak to his parents and stuff um I'm still very much like well, I, I would say I'm still very much like beginner level. Um, It's more of like a confidence thing. Yeah, I have been learning maybe about three and a half years on and off. I should be so much better than I am. But I, as I say, I think it is just more of like a confidence thing more than anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of the same. Like I've been learning for quite a while now, but it's sort of baby steps, slow progress. Yeah, exactly. Little acorns make the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So just going back to songs you've written, mm -hmm. what song are you the most proud of and why? It has to be Itty Song, right? Um, I know some people will be like, oh, it's quite like controversial for you to say that because, you know, like it wasn't received too well to begin with. <laughs> so it was kind of like, oh, no, like people don't like it. But um, I think just for me and my own personal journey as a songwriter, it would have to be the Itty song. I mean, I hit like five different milestones just from that one song and it like broke so many records and like won like awards and it was just like something that I never dreamed of for my first ever release. So I think even just how everything's played out afterwards, you know, even all of the performances that they've had at like all of the university campuses recently and just like hearing all of the crowds like singing it and like everyone's loving it it's just like I just always had this vision of like a big crowd singing all of like the words to like a song that I've written um so to actually witness that even if it is only on a screen for the meantime that's like enough for me do you know what I mean so I'm really hoping that if they have like another show in Seoul or even here then I'll actually you know experience that with my own eyes and I think I'll probably like burst into tears I think so yeah I think the Itty song is the one that I'm the most proud of that must be a very surreal experience and I do hope you get to experience that in person <laughs> definitely thank you I hope so <laughs> So what advice would you give to somebody that might be in your shoes in the future that wants to be a songwriter? It's incredibly cliche and it's like, oh, everyone always says this, but you just, you have to keep on writing. You have to keep on doing it. You know, there's been so many times, like, especially for me in my own, like, experience and my own journey, you know, I've met so many people along the way who, um, 
you know, started out a little bit later than I did. And, you know, I've sort of like helped them along the way with certain things. And, you know, I mean, everything is always about like supporting each other, lifting each other up. And, you know, obviously everybody that has their own little wins, you know, it helps to motivate you and things like that. But for me, I know how hard it is when I see all of my friends who are getting like releases out every week or they're working with this artist who I really want to work with. And, you know, it is hard to sort of like, you know, have to witness that. And, you know, I had a lot of my really close friends actually get their releases out like before I even had my first one out. And they were, you know, started out a little bit later on than me. And I was just like, man, like, when's it going to happen for me? You know, like, when's it my time to shine? So it, it it is hard and it is something that can make you question everything and make you think, oh, like, is it worth me doing this? Like, nothing's happening for me. But I promise you, if it hasn't happened for you yet, your time is coming. Like, I did not expect it to happen how it happened to me. But obviously something else that was, like, on a whole larger scale was coming my way and I just like I could not have been prepared for that you know in any way shape or form so you really have to keep on just pushing your way through and do not compare yourself to others either because it's so so easy to do that so easy you think oh like their songs are really good mine are just down here no every song every song is another in this like imaginary pipe you've got and it's just going to be pushed out and then eventually you're going to get a load of like amazing um releases and so many opportunities so yeah uh, never ever ever give up and also you have to be true to yourself as well because I've also seen so many people just change their personality completely as soon as they do reach a certain level and you know you always have to remember where you came from and you know everybody has to start from somewhere so never just like turn into this horrible person because trust me no one's going to want to work with you if you do <laughs> so oh, yeah that a bit long, but yeah <laughs> no that was great it just it's proof that everybody's journey is completely different and you never know where you're going to end up like I bet you didn't imagine that this would have happened no I mean at least not at this like early on in my career do you know what I mean <laughs> like I say like an itsy title track is not really one that you can say is your first ever release so yeah absolutely didn't expect that at all <laughs> but it's a fantastic song like it's it gets stuck in my head all the time so. <laughs> it, it gets stuck in my head to the point where I'm just annoyed listening to it all the time <laughs> I'm like I wish people would stop playing it now because it's getting on my name trust me when you've written songs yourself and you're hearing them all the time you've got a completely different like outlook on them <laughs> so yeah <laughs> I suppose it would be worse as well if it's your own voice if you're the one singing it right, I would exactly. get annoyed <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I know that you're headed back to Korea soon yeah and I was wondering if you have plans to write more k-pop while you're over there i know you might not be able to talk about any plans but yeah. if you could give a little hint that would be nice yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um well there's nothing that i'm not able to talk about at this moment in time um but yeah i definitely have plans to write a lot more Um, i've got my own studio there now so i'm really excited kind of annoyed because i'm not living in gangnam now uh, i've moved so uh, and my <laughs> my studio is a two minute walk from my old apartment so it's kind of annoying but it's fine um so yeah but i'm gonna be writing a lot more um i've got some amazing like team of like writers and producers that I work with a lot and um you know obviously while I was there last time as well I networked a lot and made a lot of new like contacts and friends so yeah I'm definitely going to be working with them as well and there's so many like other international writers who are there at the moment it seems like everybody's there and it's crazy because they're all from over the world and like the one place that you actually get to meet them is in Seoul it's kind of like everyone just meets in one place but like we're all from all over the world so yeah it's really nice it's kind of like we have our own little international writer meetup and it's really cute because like a lot of the writers that I will be meeting up with I've only ever worked with them and met them like 
online like including um Sebastian and Deirdre like who obviously I wrote sneakers with I've never met them in person we only ever worked on zoom and they're actually going to be there next week so we probably won't have time to work but we're gonna have you know a drink and celebrate the success of everything so that's going to be like a really nice like full circle moment so yeah (laughs) as you should that's amazing (laughs) Thank and you. like you say, a lot of people from around the world are like very interested in K-pop at the moment. Yeah. So I wondered about your stance on things. So what's your opinion on K-pop being a global phenomenon? I think it's very much overdue. I think, um, you, you know, it's been out for such a long time now. Obviously, we have a lot to be thankful for in terms of like, you know, the Bangtan boys, because they were the ones that really, you know, elevated it from one level to another um and I think it's important anyway for everyone that isn't aware of like other cultures to you know try and like educate themselves on what else is out there so there's a whole world out there and you know it's not only Korea as well you know it's like other like Asian countries as well you know like Japan and China and you know like even Taiwan has got like some amazing artists as well and I think I I'd like to like hope that maybe this is a chance for people to kind of give all their styles of music a chance because as I say there's so much out there (laughs) and um I know it's kind of hard because everyone thinks oh well I don't understand what they're saying so why would I listen to that I don't think you have to know what's actually being said to like feel something at least for me and I don't know if that's just because I love music and I am like a writer but you know like I think music is a universal like language and I can hear something and have like a feeling from it even if there's no lyrics over it at all you know even if it's just like a classical piece of music or anything I can go wow like this is like who like this hits you know what I mean so I think it's really important and about time that people start to take notice of yeah just like all their other cultures and other experiences yeah I think a lot of k-pop fans will definitely resonate with what you've just said I know I do for sure (laughs) is there anything you'd like to plug like your social media accounts or Uh, yeah why not (laughs) why not um so I have got social media I've got two Instagram accounts but my main Instagram account is just like my private one and it's at the light is within me um it's quite it's it's quite a long name sorry about that um but it's kind of like easy to remember as well because everyone's like oh yeah that's that's Jess um so you can uh find me on there I will upload a lot of crazy things when I'm in Korea even if I'm just out and about obviously can't disclose too much info about work things but you'll see me in the studio having fun um and you'll see just all the stuff that I'm like getting up to um I don't have Twitter anymore came off Twitter <laughs> for a lot of different reasons um so you can't find me on there but yeah Instagram um I do have another Instagram and it's Amber X official but yeah I would say my other one is uh, the best <laughs> well thank you so much for this today this has been thank really you. amazing the fantastic insight into what it's like to be a songwriter so thank you for that thank you so much for having me thank you yeah. <laughs>